the heirs to a legacy dating back thousands of years. The Dragon Lords of House Targaryen were among the 40 noble families who ruled the Valyrian Freehold, until retreating from public life when their patriarch's daughter had a vision foreseeing a terrible disaster that would destroy the peninsula. Trusting her vision, the Targaryens moved their entire household to the far western island of Dragonstone, and so were one of the few to survive the doom of Valyria, which struck 12 years later. With the Freehold gone, Essos descended into a century of blood, while House Targaryen prospered by using their dragons to control trade in the Narrow Sea. Yet their ambitions grew larger when Aegon the Conqueror inherited the leadership of their house and set his eyes upon the West. Divided into seven kingdoms and three ethnic groups, the people of Westeros had a long history of division and war, yet even with so many veteran warriors prepared for combat, few could stand against the might of the Dragon Lords, and one by one they fell to the invaders. Although Dorne was the only realm to successfully resist and remain independent, they were eventually integrated through a marriage alliance, thus completing the conquest of the Seven Kingdoms. Surviving through numerous civil wars and rebellions, House Targaryen was at last defeated in 283 AC by Robert of House Baratheon, the Lord of Storm's End, who rose to become king. With the Targaryens defeated, the reign of House Baratheon saw the decentralization of power, with the Seven Kingdoms now divided into nine territories, gaining back much of their autonomy while remaining subjects to the Iron Throne. Yet after 15 years of relative peace, Robert Baratheon died, and Westeros once again descended into a bloody civil war, with the disparate factions plotting, scheming, and slaughtering their way to victory in the Game of Thrones. Thousands of years earlier, when the continent was inhabited by giants and the children of the forest, human settlers known as the First Men marched through the Arm of Dorne in the south and began populating Westeros. Although migration stopped when the Arm of Dorne became submerged beneath the sea, another wave of humans arrived in the form of Andals from northwestern Essos, who sailed their ships to war in the name of the Faith of the Seven, conquering all the lands south of the Neck. The last great wave of migrants to make Westeros their home were the Rhoynar, a once powerful people who ruled a series of city-states in central Essos, until losing their homeland to the Dragon Lords of Valyria. Following Nymeria, their last surviving leader, the Rhoynar sailed 10,000 ships on a long and perilous journey to find a new homeland, eventually settling on the shores of Dorne. In need of allies, Princess Nymeria married a local Andal lord, Mors Martell, and together they conquered the entire desert territory, mixing their populations to establish a realm with a radical devotion to independence and preserving their Rhoynar traditions. Establishing their capital in Sunspear, House Martell ruled for centuries with their words unbowed, unbent, unbroken, coming to embody the spirit of the realm, becoming the only one of the Seven Kingdoms to refuse surrendering to House Targaryen, with the small folk continuing the war even after the nobility were defeated. Founded by the legendary hero Garth Greenhand, the fertile and lucrative Kingdom of the Reach was ruled for thousands of years by House Gardener of Highgarden, until the death of the King and his heirs in the Field of Fire, one of the most brutal battles in Aegon's conquest. In need of new leadership for the territory, the Targaryens elevated the former stewards of Highgarden to rule the Reach, passing over several larger and more established houses to instantly make the Tyrells one of the richest and most powerful families in the Seven Kingdoms. An ancient and warlike realm, the Kingdom of the Storm was traditionally ruled by House Durandon of Storm's End, descendants of the legendary Durin God's Grief, eventually expanding their realm to new heights before declining in power and at last facing their defeat against the Dragon Lords of House Targaryen. After killing their king, Argelac Durandon, in the Battle of the Last Storm, lordship of the territory was given to the best friend and possible half-brother of Aegon, Ories Baratheon, who began his reign by marrying Argela Durandon, the daughter of his fallen foe, and adopting the sigil and words of House Durandon to establish House Baratheon of the Stormlands. Nearly three centuries later, it was a son of House Baratheon who finally toppled the Targaryens and brought about an end to their rule. Growing wealthy from the gold mines beneath their fortress of Casterly Rock, House Lannister descended from the legendary hero Lan the Clever to rule over the Kingdom of the Rock for thousands of years. Originally a First Men house, they mixed with the Andals to survive their invasion of the continent. Proudly displaying the lion as their banner, the Lannisters originally resisted Targaryen rule, sending their armies to fight in the Field of Fire, but upon their defeat, they bent the knee and became lords of the Westerlands. 
Under the leadership of Tywin Lannister, their house eventually joined the rebellion of Robert Baratheon, sacking the capital and murdering the Targaryen king. As a reward for their assistance, Robert married Lord Tywin's daughter Cersei, creating an alliance to stabilize the realm. Though the Crown Lands were originally divided between the Riverlands, Reach, and Stormlands, the conquest of House Targaryen created this new territory to serve as direct vassals to the king in the capital. Some of these villages, towns, and castles were among the first to be conquered by the Dragon Lords and provided many of the troops they used in their initial conquests. Another territory controlled directly by the Iron Throne was the island of Dragonstone in the Narrow Sea, the home of House Targaryen which was taken over by the Baratheons after their rebellion. Given a great deal of sovereignty over their own affairs, the island was traditionally viewed as the seat for the heir to the throne. Originally ruled by a number of First Men factions, the prosperous and well-defended Kingdom of the Mountain and Vale united under House Royce to oppose the Andal invasion spreading across the realm. With the Andals ultimately victorious, House Aaron of the Eyrie took control and ruled for thousands of years. When Aegon the Conqueror began his invasion of Westeros, House Aaron was determined to resist and were responsible for one of the few victories achieved against the Dragon Lords. Yet they felt obligated to surrender when Visenya Targaryen flew directly into the Eyrie and demonstrated how easily they could be destroyed. Centuries later, Lord John Arryn of the Vale fostered Robert Baratheon of the Stormlands and Eddard Stark of the North, becoming like a second father to them. And so when Robert grew up to lead a rebellion against the throne, he was joined by his longtime allies in the North and Vale. Following their victory, John Arryn was named Hand of the King, becoming the second most powerful man in the Seven Kingdoms. A land plagued by perpetual war, the Riverlands were ruled over by First Men and Andal Houses, uniting and dividing until eventually conquered by the Kingdom of the Storm. After three centuries of rule, the Storm Kings were defeated by House Hor of the Iron Islands, which established a new realm they named the Kingdom of Isles and Rivers. Allying with the Andals during their invasion of Westeros, House Hor rose to become kings of the Iron Islands, but were reviled by many of their own people due to this association with outsiders. One of the more unique cultures of the Seven Kingdoms, the Ironborn were violent seafaring raiders who valued war and plunder. Worshipping the Drowned God, they believed themselves a people apart from the rest of Westeros and resented any association or capitulation to outside influence. Nevertheless, House Hor maintained their stranglehold on power through fear and cruelty, leading their armies to invade the mainland and conquer the Riverlands to form a new and powerful kingdom. During the reign of King Harren the Black, significant resources were dedicated to constructing a new seat for their house. Unfortunately, the fortress of Harrenhal was completed on the very day Aegon the Conqueror began his invasion of Westeros. Refusing to surrender, King Harren and his sons died from dragonfire in the burning of Harrenhal, and so their kingdom was divided into the Riverlands ruled by House Tully and the Iron Islands led by House Greyjoy. Both these realms later joined the rebellion of Robert Baratheon to overthrow the Targaryen dynasty. Ruled over by one of the oldest and most respected houses in the Seven Kingdoms, the Starks of Winterfell reigned over the Kingdom of the North since the days of the First Men, defeating rival factions and winning their loyalty by ruling with honor for thousands of years. Surviving through many wars and invasions, the North were the only realm to resist Andal conquest and so remained of First Men blood, preserving their ancient traditions and worshipping the Old Gods. Although the King of Winter, Torrin Stark, gathered 30,000 men to face Aegon the Conqueror during the Targaryen invasion, he knew they stood no chance against their dragons and so bent the knee and became a vassal to the King. Centuries later, Lord Eddard Stark became the best friend and foster brother of Robert Baratheon, joining him in his rebellion against the Targaryens, after which he refused any office in the capital so he could return home and simply serve as Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North. Though this was the northernmost territory of the Seven Kingdoms, the continent continued into the lands of Always Winter, marking the border with a massive wall 300 miles wide, protecting the continent from the monsters and wild men living beyond. Fearing invasion from more menacing creatures like White Walkers, the wall was enchanted with powerful magic and guarded by the Night's Watch, rangers, builders, and stewards who left their old lives behind and swore an oath to guard the realms of men.
A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Caesar the Salad, Tom Moonstruck Waters, Tamika the Black Wolf, and Alex Nunez. If you'd like to help the channel, go to patreon.com slash civilization X, where you can sign up and gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and access the Patreon-only series Heroes of Lore and Legend.